Welcome back, all you gorgeous people, to your Feel Good Breakfast Show on this Tuesday morning. And of course, something that we're still all experiencing, the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. The coronavirus has undoubtedly affected every aspect of our lives, from the way we work to the way we take care of our health. Now, those who have been diagnosed with breast cancer could find themselves at risk of developing even more severe form of coronavirus if contracted. Now, this morning, specialist surgeon Dr. Just uh, Justice Apfelstedt joined us via video call to talk us through dealing with breast cancer in the COVID-19 era. And of course, if you have any questions or concerns for the doctor, please do call us now. And that number is on screen at 021-110-552. And we'd love to answer all your questions. But a very good morning to you, doctor. Good morning, ladies in the studio and also ladies that are viewing us out in the country. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to have you here with us because we know that being aware of the first signs and symptoms and the need for screening are important ways of reducing the risk. Doctor, can you please take us through some of the first signs and symptoms of breast cancer that we should be looking out for? We would uh, prefer that all breast cancers in South Africa are being diagnosed at screening. And it's very important, especially in these times of uh, coronavirus, that you actually continue with your normal procedures for screening for malignant disease. But the majority of breast cancers are discovered by the women as a lump in their breast. Mm. Self-examination is important. Also, examination by your partner be it male or female, because about one in 10 breast cancers are discovered by the partner. That is also a very important thing, and it also enhances the relationship. So these are the two main things. You must examine your breasts if you are premenopausal. That means if you uh, are still getting your men, uh, monthly periods, you should examine your breasts after the period in the week after the period or if you are older than that you should um, examine your uh, breasts once a month make it on the first make it on the day that you get your salary or any other day that is fixed mm. these are the most important things that you still should continue doing mm. then doctor maybe you can take us through what are some of the risk factors of breast cancer Most breast cancers have no identifiable risk factors uh, that mark the woman out as high risk. But if you have a family history, then that is one of the most important uh, risk factors that we're seeing. But about 90 out of 100 women that we are seeing have no discernible family history of breast cancer. The other risk factors that are unmodifiable are that we're getting uh, our children or later in life and that we have a different form of diet, which we actually can correct. This brings me to the other most important uh, risk factor for breast cancer, and that is obesity and lack of exercise. These two are correctable, and they have made it that we see an avalanche of breast cancer. Furthermore, late pregnancy in life, as I mentioned earlier, only few children, but one wouldn't impose lifestyle changes just to decrease the breast cancer risk. Doctor, are there unique risks of COVID-19 for people with breast cancer? The answer is yes and no. Specifically, uh, the uh, uh, COVID-19 does not increase your breast cancer risk or decrease it. Mm. As a matter of fact, it stays the same. However, there is a big interaction with COVID-19 on breast cancer on multiple fronts. The first one that we are seeing is that the um, women are afraid to come for screening. And that is a very tragic thing because we estimate that the COVID-19 epidemic and the lack of screening puts us back about 10 years. It negates 10 years of progress that we've had uh, in breast cancer early detection. Then the other interaction that we are having is <clears throat> that uh, uh, in the treatment, many women uh, would have um, uh, chemotherapy. 
And chemotherapy is the treatment option that decreases your immunity. And we expect that actually patients with COVID-19 infections have a more severe cause, even though we haven't seen it in uh, picking up, uh, being picked up in big statistics, this is what we would expect. The other treatment modalities, however, for example, surgery, for example, hormonal treatment, for example, radiotherapy, do not interfere with the COVID-19 and have, in our experience, no adverse effect on COVID-19 uh, infections. So what we are seeing now is women are presenting due to later detection with more advanced cancers. Mm. And this is something that uh, we are regretting. And this is something that uh, we should actually avoid at all costs. What a, be what a beautiful conversation to be having this morning. Also just educating us, Dr. Justice Apfelstadt will not go anywhere. We'll be answering all your questions. So please do, if you have uh, uh, any questions, call us on 021-110-552. And we'll also be taking you through the precautions you can take uh, with regards to COVID-19 and breast cancer. But right now, let's find out what's happening on social media. It's my feel good. You are still keeping it locked in your feel-good breakfast show. Now, continuing with our health topic this morning, we are still joined by specialist surgeon, Dr. Justice Apfelstedt, and he is still with us, and we'll be answering all your burning questions again. So please do keep, um, keep it locked on our social mm -hmm. media platforms, and, of course, you can call us if you'd like uh, the doctor to answer any of your questions. Doctor, thank you so much for staying with us this morning. Yes, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> now, before the ad break, we spoke about, you know, the risk factors that comes with breast cancer and the detection of it. But now during COVID-19 and the lockdown, how has that affected breast cancer care or the management of it? I mentioned earlier that we have seen a reduction uh, in the month of uh, April of 80% of screenings being done and has been reduced even up to now. So this is a very dangerous thing because if the breast cancer is detected several months later, uh, that is leads to what we call stage progression. And to give you an idea, breast cancer is usually detected in uh, stage zero or one. We are then talking about uh, stage two or three. To give you an idea about the survival of stage one and uh, stage zero and one, that's about uh, 95 to 100% survival. This is not a disease that will kill you. Whereas if you wait for your breast cancer to be detected and it migrates to stage two and three, stage two and three have got a, a survival, long-term survival of uh, at 10 years of about 50 to 70%. So the delay in treatment has led to transforming of what could have been a mere speed bump in your life to a uh, mortality. And one should not forget the mortality of COVID-19 for all we know is about 0.1% in the population as at large whereas the mortality of breast cancer is much higher once you have it. Mm. So here's my plea to the women out there, continue going for your screening. Mm. I understand that many women have got a problem with going to hospitals because uh, hospitals are being seen to be spreaders of disease and that's justified. We've seen that initially in China and Italy, but hospitals have wisened up and they are screening um, setups available that are outside of hospitals where no COVID-19 patients are treated in exclusive breast units where women can be at rest that they will not be or can be reassured that they will not be infected by COVID-19. Mm. So this is my recommendation for the women. Continue. Then uh, if we want to uh, talk to uh, precautionary measures, is keep your immune system uh, intact by exercising and uh, keeping on your normal uh, habits. Keep a healthy diet and once again, go for your screening visits. Mm.
continue the screening process? Did early detection is better than you know having to cure it once it's in full in its full effect? And I'm so I'm so glad that you're also highlighting the fact of a healthy lifestyle change uh, and just incorporating a good healthy diet for mm -hmm. you so that you can also just protect yourself against the virus but also against the cancer. But doctor, make sure to stay tuned to your feel good breakfast show as well because our specialist a surgeon Dr. Justice Apfelstedt will be answering all of your questions on breast cancer in the COVID-19 era. Again, if you have any questions or concerns for the doctor, please do call us um, on 21 We'll be answering your questions shortly. It's my feel -good you're still keeping it locked right here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Now, of course, continuing with our health topic this morning, specialist surgeon Dr. Justice Apfelstedt is still with us and will be answering all your burning questions on breast cancer and COVID-19. Again, thank you to every individual who has sent through their questions via our social media platforms, and we do have them right now. Uh, doctor, thank you so much for staying with us this morning. Yes, uh, just as a small aside, I love cooking and uh, accidentally I uh, cooked a bone marrow soup on Sunday. Oh, Ooh. that's so lekker. Ooh. Well, listen, we, we might then need to bring you it. back. We need yeah. to bring you here and then For maybe you and Chef Clem can have a better head-to-head uh, -head battle with the bone marrow soup, okay? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I would be looking forward to that. <laughs> Doctor, so we have a few questions from our viewers on social media. The first one comes from Hetty. She says, how do you know before feeling the knob that you have breast cancer? Okay, uh, the only way of diagnosing uh, breast cancer before you can feel it is by screening. And the most effective screening method is mammography and uh, combined with ultrasound. Now, if we're doing ultrasound uh, or ultrasound and mammography in uh, the appropriate age group of women without a family history, just general women, which are 90% of all women, then screening should take place from age 40 onwards. And we would discover for every thousand mammogram every year that we are doing, <clears throat> we would discover in between eight and 10 breast cancers. And these cancers are generally curable. Whereas if you wait until you have a lump, then uh, the mortality rapidly rises. Got it. We also have another one from Toomey. Uh, he says, I heard about male breast cancer. My question is, how does one know um, he is diagnosed with it? Are there any pains or symptoms for male breast cancer? The vast majority of male breast cancer is being diagnosed uh, when the patient feels a lump in his breast. Because men's breasts are generally, or in most cases, a little bit smaller than female breasts, you would find a lump more easy by simply palpating it. Also, breast cancer in males is rare. Just to give you an idea, if we put uh, a 1,000 women in one space, I would find uh, in the course of their lives, in 100 of them, breast cancer. Whereas if we're taking 1,000 males and put them in the same space and watch them over their lifetime, one would suffer breast cancer. But breast cancer in men is for us interesting for another reason, because it indicates to us that the women may be at very high risk of getting breast cancer, because it indicates in many cases to us that there's a genetic predisposition in the family, and we can test for that, and then test the women and the rest of the family and suss that out. Mm. The third one, doctor, says, comes from Mutebe. She says, do I have to be 40 years old and above to get a mammogram? The answer to that is yes. Uh, unless you have a family history, then we assess the family history. Then we assess also uh, what your genetics are and uh, then get a tailor-made uh, screening program for you. But generally, uh, mammography is not worthwhile because breast cancer is relatively rare below age 40. Hmm. And then we have a, a, a last one, a last social media comment, ask, question asking, how to ensure I never get it? Prevention is better than cure, but we won't tell us because it will mean less. But the doctors, I'm sure saying, won't tell us because it will mean less clients for him. So I guess it's just, again, to reiterate the prevention for this. Okay. Um... I must tell you, I would love all women to be free of breast cancer, but uh, unfortunately, this is unrealistic. The best way uh, that you can prevent breast cancer is 
to stay generally healthy. That means eating healthily and what a uh, healthy uh, diet is, is very well known. Exercise and uh, prevent that you're becoming obese. Just to give you an idea, being obese raises your breast cancer risk by about 50%. And this is why we're seeing so much breast cancer around. Conversely, if you exercise regularly and you exercise strenuously for more than four hours per week, then you will decrease your breast cancer risk by about uh, 30%. So these are things that you can do. And I would love all women to do that because that would, uh, number one, keep them much healthier and also much more uh, long lived so that we can enjoy life together longer. Doctor, I think that everyone could take away something from this. So a massive thank you to you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Justice. I for said, um, but doctor, before we let you go, we actually have a caller on the line now. It's Debbie from Cape Town. Debbie, are you with us this morning? Hello, Debbie. Hello, Debbie. I think Debbie, Debbie, are you with us? Debbie, are you with us? Uh, well, it looks like Debbie has lost, but maybe she can connect with you on our social media platforms. Again, a massive thank you to you, Dr. Justice Affelstedt, giving us some insight into breast cancer in this modern era, and also just taking the time to connect with us this morning. So thank you again so much. Thank you for having me on the show, and uh, hope to see you soon again. We will for that soup cooked down against <laughs> Chef Clem. <laughs> now this With August, as South, as South Africa celebrates Women's Month, we urge all women to go for regular health checkups and cancer screenings in order to detect any life-threatening illnesses such as breast cancer. And we hope that you've taken some notes this morning with our conversation with our specialist.